tap into the minds of the innovators and the mavericks who challenge the status quo with new ideas, systems, and solutions. Welcome to Innovation Mavericks. Welcome to Innovation Mavericks, our blog for growing businesses and entrepreneurs uh, to give them insight of the trends and ideas and innovation that's occurring uh, in their industry or throughout the economy. And with me today, I have a gentleman who is not only a dear friend, but somebody I tremendously respect. He is the EOS coach uh, at my firm, Five Plan Partners. He's made a huge difference and it's had rippling effects. I am proud to introduce you today to Mitch York. Mitch, Hello, it's Greg. great to have you here. It's, I'm, it's great to be here. I'm looking we, forward to we, it. Yeah, we, this is this. This blog is long overdue. Uh, the what, what you've done for our firm here at Five Plan Partners is has been incredible, and your leadership and the use and of educating us with the EOS, uh, you know, way of life uh, in business has been fantastic. And uh, I might point out to you, sir, this is being recorded, so you can repeat that over and over again. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Sure. Well, it's, it's from the heart. And uh, so with that, uh, let's introduce people to EOS. You know, just, just give us a, a brief, yeah. brief summary here. Great. Well, EOS stands for Entrepreneurial Operating System. It was developed about 20 years ago by an entrepreneur named Gino Wickman, who wrote a book about it called Traction which has sold over a million copies. And EOS, very simply, is a set of tools and principles that helps companies operate better, particularly entrepreneurial companies that are usually privately held. Uh, it's, it's pointed at companies with roughly 10 to 250 employees that are growth-oriented, that have the right product in the right market, and that have some frustration with some aspect of running their business and want to get more out of their business. Yes. So that's, in a nutshell, what EOS is. I'm sure we'll get into more depth. No, no. That's, that, I mean, that's a, great, that, that, that's a great explanation. And, you know, my eyes were open. You and I met in New York City. Uh, we were at Doc Seafood the first time we met in person. This is before everybody was doing virtual. And... Uh, you just did a great job explaining it to me, and I could see the value and benefits of working with you and implementing EOS. And I, Mitch, I'd appreciate, you know, just explain how does EOS and your expertise energize the business growth process? Because some people might think, oh, I could just read a book. No, I'm telling you now, as somebody who had read the book, Mitch's expertise with EOS. I appreciate that. Thanks, Greg. Well, uh, I guess this question of how does EOS help companies grow? And I think that's the essence of the question. Sure. And to me, growth is a function of a few things. And the best path to growth happens when certain conditions are met. So to grow, what do you need to do in, in an entrepreneurial company? You need to have alignment on the vision of the company. If everybody is going in all kinds of different directions, yeah. instead of growing in the same direction, that's not good. So you need alignment around the vision. You need to have the right people in the right seats, people who understand the core values of your firm and people who really do an excellent job in the function and the roles that they're assigned to. You need to have strong systems of accountability so that people know how they're measured Everybody has a number. Everybody has a goal every 90 days, those sorts of things. That leads to the conditions of growth. You have to have very clear processes that take a long time to develop, but you need to document them in a, in a simple way and make sure that they're followed by everybody. You need to have a healthy leadership team that communicates openly and honestly, because as the leadership team goes, so goes the rest of the company. You need to be able to solve problems as they arise for the greater good of the business instead of having the same problems next year as you have now. Very true. Those are kind of the, the indicators of, of growth. 
And if you want to grow, you've got to figure out a way to pull all of that together and do it every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, kind of that, my, that, my assessment. No, no, you that's that's all the variables. And it also is where you play a key role in helping us bring that together, not only for the visionary, uh, but for the entire team. And, and you know that those terms are interesting. Like we use the term visionary. Most people don't, they think, oh, visionary, that's that's someone that sits on top of a mountain. But in, in EOS, we have certain ideas. We don't really look at titles. We look at functions. And companies have usually between three and eight functions, typically, like marketing and sales is a function, operations is a function, finance is a function. Then there are two functions. One we call integrator. That's the person who pulls everything together, makes sure the, uh, the trains run on time. And then there's another function in some companies called visionary. And that's a person who's kind of the 30,000 foot strategic thinker, doesn't necessarily like the details, but has lots of ideas and is, is the, the flag holder, the, the, the embodiment of the core values. So yeah, in a firm like Five Plan Partners, you are the, for sure, the visionary and you have a great team uh, working with you that fill other functions. No, you're right. I do have an incredible team uh, and care about them a lot and care about our clients and the rippling effect by embracing EOS has just been a win-win-win across the board for everybody involved. What are some of the mistakes you see business owners making and how does EOS help correct them? Mistakes are, are part of the growth process. So mistakes are going to happen. Shouldn't feel bad about them. They're, they're necessary to motivate change and improve. But there are definitely mistakes that I see o over five years of studying companies in this way. Yeah. And for, you know, 15 years before that of working in companies and coaching companies. So wow. there, there are a couple of mistakes I see frequently. One is, and the most prevalent is that many companies hire for the right seat instead of the right person. And I'll explain that. Hiring for the right seat means you have an open position, you're eager to fill it, you're hoping the next person that walks in the door is the answer to your prayers. <laughs> and so you get a, you get resumes like, oh, this resume looks like just what we need. And you're very predisposed to say, this is great. And what really should happen is, that first conversation, they wouldn't be sitting in your office unless the resume was acceptable. That's true. So in my mind, I like to get someone in, turn the resume over and say, we're just going to talk about core values, ours and yours. And in EOS companies, companies that run on EOS have done a lot of work to establish what their core values are. And there are all kinds of great questions you can answer, you can ask and have answered that will show you someone's true self and whether they are potentially a right person. If they are, then you can continue a discussion about right seat. If they're not, you just saved yourself a lot of time and aggravation. So you don't have to talk to them anymore. So that's one. I think another mistake most companies or many companies make is they're not great at goal setting. So they have they have goals that they set. They'll sort of like create goals or, you know, leadership team will get together beginning of the year, create some goals. And a lot of times those disappear into a drawer somewhere. Right. Very until true. the end of the year, we go, Hey, did we, what about that goal that we had? And so, Oh, first of all, let me, let me go back because I was talking about hiring for the right seat. And you asked me about the tools. So the tool we the tools we have for that are the what we call an accountability chart, which shows functions, high level functions, the roles under those functions, and then we decide who's the right person to be in each seat. No, that's so true. you have right person, this. right seat. It eliminates you can, this. Exactly. You can have one person and multiple seats, but you can't have two people in the same seat. Because right. if two people are accountable for something. Nobody's accountable. So that's one tool that helps solve that problem of the right person, right seat. Another is this tool that we call the VTO, the Vision Traction Organizer. And this is eight questions that we answer by implementing EOS. The questions are things like, what are your core values? 
what is your core focus? What is your 10-year target? What is your marketing strategy, your three-year picture, your one-year plan, your 90-day goals? In order to have a really good uh, chance at executing your plan, you have to answer these questions and communicate them to everybody. So this VTO is wonderful. It's in two pages, very easy. So that's the first thing I see is mistakes, and those are the tools. The second one is this idea that goals are not set specifically enough. They're too vague. So we have this tool called ROCKS. Rocks are nothing more than 90-day goals, but not too many. We say three to seven, because if you have three to 17 or 27 or 37, if everything's important, then nothing's important. So well, we smart. limit it. We said they need to be limited in number, and they need to be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Sometimes people say realistic and time-bound. Yeah. Smart goals. So that's key. And the other, the third tool when it comes to having good goals is a weekly scorecard, which you have, which measures what are the most important numbers that the business needs to keep track of every single week to be and able to. It doesn't to have to be bottom line. No, no, all kinds of numbers. When you they say numbers, it, it involves a lot of different numbers that are, you know, uh, key to the business. Yes. And it, it's numbers, it's it's operating ratios, it's efficiencies, all kinds of things. It's number of number of meetings that you have, all all kind anything is is fair game as long as it's an important number and a um, leading indicator of what's going to happen next. So mistakes about goal setting are pretty clear. And then the biggest casualty is always accountability. You know, who things move really quickly. Uh, commitments are often forgotten. Companies do these one-year goals and they disappear. So having that accountability chart, having that VTO, Vision Traction Organizer, having a one-year plan that's part of the VTO that says, what are the three to seven most important things we have to accomplish this year? And having those 90-day goals, living in a 90-day world is what we all always say. That creates, that solves for the lack of accountability that you see in some companies. So I think those things together are the mistakes and the solutions. No, and, and I hope our viewers are really uh, taking some notes here because you're absolutely right. The other thing that I was amazed at and, and still talk about is the simplicity that once you get organized and implement EOS, the simplicity and, and being able to do this over and over, getting the right people in the right seat, the accountability chart is is phenomenal, but there's a simplicity to all this that allows everyone in your organization to understand. That's right. And the communication just becomes a lot easier. And in addition to that, like I said earlier, people can go, well, they're supposed to do it. Or, you know, it's, this is my, I'm accountable for it. And I've got to get this taken care of. Yep. I just want to know, what is your favorite part of EOS? My, my favorite part of, the, of EOS is the EOS process itself, because what we do with companies is we say, look, there, we have a proven process of how we improve companies' performance, entrepreneurial companies' performance. We start with three foundational full-day sessions with teams that are a month apart, foundational tools, lay the groundwork. Then after that's done, we move to quarterly planning sessions where we look at what happened the prior quarter, let's plan for the next quarter, and let's resolve any long-term issues. Then we have an annual that's two days. First day is about team health. Second day is about planning for the next year. So the process itself is actually my favorite tool. Oh, I can, I it, can really, it really works. Yeah. And it's, and you know, we do it the same way every time and it's, it's consistent. So it's reliable. So yeah, there are tools within it. We have a tool set of about 20 core tools and I'm, you know, all, all of my children are beautiful in the EOS, um, EOS toolbox, but the process itself is what's so great. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I'm also curious, where do you often see the light bulb go off when you're coaching? <laughs> When we're, well, when we're implementing EOS, you know, um, 
sometimes people are a little bit or companies or leadership teams are a little bit they, they don't quite know what they're what they're going to expect low, and, we, and we start our process we actually start our process with a 90 minute overview that we do for leadership teams which is essentially kind of like our first EOS session and they get enough to say yeah i think this can help us but the the light bulb goes off when they realize that they are that they must have the right people in the right seats and i would say that Easily more than half of the leadership teams that I've worked with on our first day working together, the difference between the first day and six months later, first of all, there's usually one or more changes in the, in the leadership team. It's not uncommon at all, at least half the cases, because EOS can be, it, it, it peels back the obvious that people don't want to understand very honest sometimes. Thing. And it has, and it's better for everybody so that you have to have everyone, especially on the leadership team, rowing in the same direction. So the, the light bulb of, you know, we are going to be stuck unless we have the right people in the right seats. That's a, that's a big light bulb moment. And I, I think another one is, um, in the first quarterly session that we do, we kind of take a look back. And we have this uh, 20 question assessment it's called the organizational assessment. And we have leadership teams do it at the beginning. And then they just sort of file it away and they get a score between zero and a hundred. And then we say, okay, let's look at where you were then. Think about where you were then in terms of vision, people, data, issues, process, and execution. And think about where you are now. Give a score, zero to 100. Where were you then? Where are you now? And the improvements, and our goal is to get everybody to be 80% plus strong in each of these six key components of EOS. Almost inevitably, there's significant improvement just in a six-month time frame. And then just on from there, the light bulb of, wow, we really improved a lot things have gotten a lot better is if you have the right people in the right seats, generally speaking, what happens? It's a, it's a great feeling for me. I'm, I sort of, you know, I'm, I'm expecting that and I'm rarely disappointed. If we do our jobs right, that's what happens. Well, and, and I will say this for our viewers. I have, I have experienced that. I've witnessed that and it's just gotten better and better. The other thing is, you know, the light bulbs went off as I watched our team really get close, open up, uh, really bring forth the, the ideas, the innovation, better ways to improve our systems and processes. Um, it was outstanding and continues to be uh, to this day. So, and, and I will say this to our viewers, is that I did extensive search to find Mitch York. I want to keep in mind, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, and Mitch York is in New York City. And the reason I tell you that is that I found the right person for the right seat in Mitch York as EOS coach. I interviewed different ones. I had read the book Traction. I tried to do it myself and finally came to the conclusion I needed to find somebody who was truly an expert in this area. So, Mitch, I would like uh, to ask you uh, one last question here, uh, any parting words? I want you to mention the book Traction. Uh, hopefully my comments in regards to what you've done for our firm has been beneficial for everybody. And I want to also ask, are you okay with sharing how people can get in touch with you? Oh, of course. And uh, you can see my, my bookshelf behind me with copies of Traction and other <laughs> books. And, <laughs> and what I'll say to <laughs> to any client and friend of Five Plant Partners and of Greg's that um, if anyone would like, uh, if you run a business and you would like a copy of Traction, get in touch with me and I'll be happy to put one in the mail to you. You can reach me at mitchell.york at eosworldwide.com. And uh, that's probably the best way to reach me. Okay. And, 
Um, and, and I think if you're, if I can say one last thing as a, as a message to business owners out there, I come from a, a family business. My dad had a catering company in New York City for 30 years and worked very, very hard. And if EOS had been around uh, then, I think he would have gotten a lot out of it. And I think the key thing is to entrepreneurs is you don't need, especially owners, you don't need to walk the factory floor alone, whether it's a factory or an office. Yeah. And you don't have to uh, be, you don't have to, to tolerate the frustrations. You, if you have a great business, the right product in the right market, uh, and, and it feels like at times you're, you're barreling down the highway at 80 miles an hour in first gear, you are not alone. And there's a, there's a solution. And yes. if you open up your mind, um, the EOS is something that can really, really help. Yeah. Well, we can't thank you enough. Um, you know, to our viewers, I didn't even begin to give Mitch's bio and background, but it's very impressive. And he definitely knows about business. And uh, he definitely is an expert uh, at EOS. And so on that note, Mitch, uh, we thank you from uh, Five Plan Partners and all that you have done. And uh, we, we are just thrilled and honored to be working with you. And thank you for taking time out from your, your coaching and training with uh, other clients to do this vlog with me. It means it's a great deal. It's my pleasure. It's my so, pleasure, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I just want to encourage everyone to research more on about EOS, uh, to watch this vlog. Uh, feel free to reach out to Mitch uh, because it's life-changing, and uh, I can verify that. Hope you have a great week, a month, and if you embrace EOS, may the rest of 2022 into 2023 be great for you. Amen. We're always striving every day here at Five Plan Partners for our clients to have a better, richer, fuller life. And introducing EOS to our clients has been one of the ways we've done. Have a great week. And read Greg's book. <laughs>